Hello, my name is Nathan, uh, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the wireless topics that we frequently are asked uh, in our line of work, be they cases or meeting with customers. Uh, one of the questions that we get very frequently has to do with wireless bridging and signals uh, reaching point A to point B. And that brings us to the topic for today, which is the Fresnel zone. Uh, Fresnel is named for a French scientist, and uh, I've seen or heard many pronunciations of his name. Uh, Fresnel, Fresnel, uh, uh, Faux shizzle my frizzle. I mean, I've, I've heard just about everything you can imagine for this guy's name. Uh, so I guess wherever you come from, however you pronounce it, feel free. This diagram here pretty much describes what, uh, what the drive of this is today. Here you'll see there's two antennas, crudely drawn, I apologize, with a mountain in the middle. And here is the example of the Fresnel zone. Essentially, when you have two antennas bridging a distance, they will communicate line of sight. The radio waves will travel point A to point B in a straight line. However, along that transmission, the further they are apart, those signals will widen. Uh, not really a big deal as long as those antennas are high enough to, uh, to accommodate that signal widening. But what tends to happen is that between two bridged antennas, there will be obstructions. Now that's not the end of the world. Obstructions can be, you know, countered for by raising your antennas. And there is, of course, an allowable limit of obstruction which we can get into. The Fresnel zone just accounts or, or deals with how much of that signal do we need to let through uh, and how wide will that signal get the further these antennas are apart. And what I have for you over here actually is a math problem that would allow you to figure that out if you're really into it. Uh, we could earn the little blue sad face because I'm not a big fan of math. Uh, but if you are, feel free to, to dive into that. Uh, at the end of the uh, program, though, we'll have a link for you that can do some of that figuring for you. Um, but really, the obstruction levels, uh, the max is about 40% obstruction. The recommended is less than 20%. So really, uh, the point of this is that you want to have your antennas high enough to accommodate any obstructions where you could run into situations uh, one which happened not that long ago where we had a school that had a, a bridge link uh, point to point and every day around three o'clock would lose their link and that was due to school buses pulling up in front of the school and it took us forever to figure out that was what was causing it but it can be the littlest things but as long as more of that signal gets through than doesn't you're going to be able to maintain that connection all right so hopefully you've enjoyed our presentation and hopefully we'll see you back next time where I promise uh, we won't have a sad face, we'll have a happy face, and we'll, we'll find a reason to smile.